If my calculations are correct, this video should be uploaded on Christmas Eve 2016. So for those of you that do celebrate Christmas, I hope you have a fantastic day tomorrow. For those that don't, I hope you have a great day anyway, even if it is just a normal day for you. So this is episode 46 of Regen Rovers. And today, it's, it's another big day for the club. Just like last year, we managed to get through to the first round of the FA Cup. And this year, we're taking on Fleetwood Town, another League One team. Last year, we lost against Colchester United from League One. Bit unfortunate defeat in the end, wasn't it? We did go 1-0 up, but they punished us throughout the game and finally broke us down. Will the same happen today, or will we get thrashed by the better opposition? Let's have a look at Fleetwood Town. They are bottom of League One so they're having a bad run this season they've managed to win three games draw five and lose eight but they are bottom of the table so the morale will hopefully be low going into this game against us now I just wanted to address a couple of things before we get on with today's episode there's been a few murmurings among the fans among you guys in the stadium it's been a couple of holding Warren out banners over the years um, but there's been a few questions. Firstly, I'd like to address the money issue. Someone did ask a few episodes ago, why am I not spending the money that is being given to me? So I've got 58 grand to spend, uh, lots of money left over in the wages. One good reason is to save the money for future years, to keep the finances healthy and not spend the money that is provided to me. Another reason is I am spending, you know, the odd 500 quid or a grand on transfers if we just look for example, this season I did spend £500 on Kevin Miguel from Dorchester Town, but that's it. The problem is, if I bid, the, the players that cost like 10 grand, 20 grand at this level, I've, I have bid those sort of fees for certain players that look very good, but the issue is they want huge amounts of wages, which is more than I can afford. So that's why I'm not spending money, basically because I can't. The players that do cost money want wages that are too high, like, you know, a thousand pound a week. And the board won't allow me to spend that. And I think that would be bad for the club if I did that. So that addresses the money issue. Secondly, my tactics. I know you guys sometimes have a problem with my tactics. Playing wing backs and that sort of thing. But remember, we're predicted to finish bottom pretty much every year. And we've never finished bottom. We got promoted with a wing back formation. Last season we finished seventh. Very close to the playoffs. Very close to, to winning the league with a wing back formation. So I know I have my problems with drawing too many games, as I will show you in a second, but give me credit. I am doing reasonably well. I know I can, be, I can improve, everyone can improve, and hi hindsight is a wonderful thing. You know, when I draw a game and afterwards you think, well, maybe I should have gone contained for the last 10 minutes to try and hold on, or maybe I should have kept it on attacking to try and get the second goal and make sure they didn't equalise. Hindsight is just one of those things that everyone else to them it looks obvious what you should do but in the moment you don't always pick up on that do you and you're probably going to say the same thing today because we've drawn so many games since the last episode of course in the last episode we did draw against Ebsfleet again Berry. Ebsfleet our bogey team on the series we still haven't beaten them but Berry, looking back I was a bit annoyed because of how many draws we were having but it was a good draw against a team predicted to finish top of the table. So looking back, I'm pretty happy with that result. We did scrabble past Margate in the FA Cup fourth qualifying round. In the first game, they went 2-0 up after seven minutes. I have no idea what was happening, but they were just destroying us in, the, in those first few minutes. But Spencer Drury got us back in the game in the second half. He came off the bench for Bradley Berry, who wasn't quite working in this match. He's had a good season. But he wasn't quite working. And he scored two goals to, to send it to a replay. Alex Hall played his first couple of games in goal, by the way, during this FA, these FA Cup games. It's a great cross from Scott. And Drury managed to get that goal to, to put us back in the game. And then he scored the equaliser in the 56th minute. Lofts played on with an injury in this game. That was a fantastic ball from Dibber, who's had a good few games with us at the start of the season in his first season with the club. And that was Spencer Drury's fifth goal of the season.
We then convincingly beat Sutton United back to winning ways in the league. Bradley Berry with another goal in the 8th minute. This was a good performance from us. Danny By man of the match at the back once again. Tim Green played very well, got an assist from the right wing back role. Halcroft, I've looked at him and I've, I've decided he's not good enough. He hasn't really developed. And I know um, someone recently did put in the comments that the reason why some of my players aren't developing is because they're on non-contract. So apparently they don't train as hard. Now, I would ideally like to have all the all the you know top players that are playing regularly on proper part-time contracts, but some of them just do not want to to know. They don't want a part-time contract. They only are willing to be on a non-contract, which is very strange. But I it's out of my hands. Unfortunately, there's play, certain players at the club that just do not want to be on the books properly. Whether it be for tax reasons, I don't know. <laughs> this was the second goal. Chris Scott, lovely header from Drury to set him up. And that was Chris Scott's fifth goal of the season. Then we got two draws. One against Woking, which I would have hoped would have been a win, to be honest. But we were lucky to get back into it in the end. They took the lead. I went overload in the second half. Just did threw everything at them. And Bradley Berry eventually got a 70th minute equaliser. He played very well, 8.3. Average rating, you can see that we had 24 shots to their 18. It was a goal. It was an end-to-end -end game. And this was the goal. Marlow with the assist. Lovely ball through to Barry, But that is a top-class finish from him into the top right-hand corner. Unfortunately, good old Charlie Lofts did get sent off in the 89th minute. And uh, we weren't able to push forwards and get a winner. Decent draw away from home against Chester, though. Considering they took an 85th minute lead. And when that happened, I had to throw everything at them. We didn't play very well in this game, you can see. Less possession, less shots. Chester were all over us at times. Defence played well for them. Dominic Bernard was a man of the match for them. But we did get a really late equaliser. And this was a great finish from Scott. He just calmly placed it. It was just a slow, agonisingly tantalising shot that the keeper just couldn't quite reach. And that is, he's a quality player, Chris Scott. I'm very glad I picked him up. It was a bit of a gamble signing him in a way. I didn't really know. Well, it wasn't much of a gamble because he's actually on a non-contract. But I've tried to offer him a proper contract, by the way, and he doesn't want to listen. So it, it's, it's a little bit irritating, but he's scoring goals. And that's all that matters at this moment in time. Most of my players, there's no chance of them being picked up by another team because other teams don't see them as good enough as evidenced by the fact that when I do release certain players, they just retire because they can't find another team. Anyway, if we look at the team, Bradley Berry, top scorer of seven goals. He's also got three assists. Chris Scott, six goals, four assists. Both of them having great seasons. Spencer Drury, five goals, three assists. He's doing much better this season. And Brady Chick, four goals and one assist. Still hoping for Jack Young to, to come good again. He, he does have a few assists. He got, well, he's got one assist this year and one goal. But you can see assist-wise, Dibber doing well, Drury doing well, Scott obviously out on top there. Tim Green's got a couple assists since coming into right wing back. Average rating-wise, Danny By way out in the lead as usual, despite you know a mistake earlier in the season. He overall is playing very well for us. Bradley Berry though, he he is the star man this season. He's improving enormously in training, and he is scoring goals. Considering last year. He didn't score a single goal. He's completely turned it around. But we will be focusing on Chris Scott in today's Player Diaries. I thought I'd look at this. You can see his most recent matches. You can see, first day of the season, he got off to a scoring start, didn't he? The, um, let's watch the goal again, just to remind you. It was a great assist from Bradley Berry there, running down the left, putting a good ball in, and it wasn't the best of finishes because it was quite close to the keeper, but he stuck it in the back of the net, and he had two shots in that game. One was off target from a long way out. If we just look at his stats here, these are the games that he scored in. And so Barrow, he scored against, he scored against Wrexham, he scored two against Hampton and Richmond, and then in recent games, one against Sutton and one against Chester. Against Wrexham, he had four shots, that was the crucial one that went in, in the 92nd minute. Crucial goal from him. He did have, I don't know if he had any other scoring chances. 
that was the clear cut chance. He stuck away his clear cut chance. That what that's what you want from your poacher, putting it away, putting those chances away. Against Hampton and Richmond, had a very good game. Two goals. One shot was saved, and another shot was off target. That was an opportunity by the looks of it. But he, yeah, so he, he put away two clear cut chances. Now, in fact, he missed. I think he missed his two clear cut chances. If we just look. Yeah, that's interesting. So. He, the two goals he scored were not clear-cut chances. The two clear-cut chances he had, he actually missed. But, at the end of the day, he made up for it by scoring two opportunities that perhaps weren't clear-cut chances. This is why he is the Player Diaries feature player today, because he's played very well in the last few games. You can see from his only shot against Sutton United, he stuck the ball in the back of the net. It was a clear-cut chance, but he put it away, and that's what matters. Didn't make any mistakes in this game, which is pleasing. There's his average positions with without the ball and overall. Heat map wise, 74 touches in this game. It's a lot of touches for a striker, I think. Mainly around this area of the pitch, he was playing on the left hand side of the front three today. And lastly, against Chester, two shots. One of them went in, one of them was saved. Both of them were clear cut chances, so he should have really got two goals in this game and perhaps one as the game. But he's not. <laughs> He's scoring goals for the majority of his chances that he's getting. Not many passes in this game at all. I think, did he come off the bench in this one? Because that is hardly any passes at all. Very strange. Yeah, he must have come off the bench because only seven touches in this game is, is very slim. So that's Chris Scott. He is improving, as you can see there. A few attributes are going up. Composure, most importantly, is going up, which is very good to see. So against Fleetwood Town, I'm going with the old formation more defensive we've got standard wing backs we've got a defensive midfielder in there only two up front now i'm going with orford and drury up front against fleetwood now i'm playing orford up front because he has done magnificently well in the under 23s he scored 15 goals already this season remember bradley berry's top goal scorer for the under 23s last season with 20 and orford's already on 15 and it's only november he deserves another chance in the first team i think and he's going to play up front as the target man alongside drury he's not really an advanced forward but i'm going to play him there spencer drury has also improved finishing composure and off the ball have all gone up to 12. remember they started on 11 so he's actually improved quite a lot already whilst at the club Marlow and Dibber are going to play central midfield. Dibber in not really his traditional ball-winning ball midfielder role, but I'm going with him there. Bai has moved into defensive midfield because I don't really have any defensive midfielders now. I do in the end of 23s. We've got Sheriff, but I'm going with Danny Bai in the middle, which allows Lawrence, on loan from Lincoln City, to play in that central role. We'll see how he gets on there. Walker on the right, Lofts on the left, Warren and Green as the inverted, uh, as the normal wing backs. They've both been very good since coming back into the team. So Fleetwood are playing a classic 4-4-2. It's going to be tough, despite the fact they are bottom of League One. They are two divisions above us. Remember, they've got a much better, stronger squad. They're a professional team. They've always been, big, been good enough to get up to League One in the first place. Let's give the fans something to cheer. And I'm going with the old defensive... Well, it's more of a defensive tactic, isn't it? Let's see how we get on. I hope there's lots of you here for this FA Cup clash. Yeah, looks looks like there's plenty of people there. Lots of people wearing white. The, the white away kit, I guess. It's an early opportunity for us. We're keeping the ball well in this these first few seconds and then Dibber can't quite win that but Lofts comes in and does well Orford wins the ball is this going to be an opportunity in the first few seconds Marlow back to buy who tries to find a long ball but that's the end of that highlight wow this is boring half time nil nil by the way earlier today I should have uploaded a video something different but connected to Regenerators but can but also connected to an old old series that I've done it's the return of emulating, the, the emulating series for those of you that have watched those in the past. If you haven't, then go and check it out so you know what it's all about. It's, it gets you guys involved even more in my channel. This series is getting you guys involved anyway because of Fan Corner and a few other things. You're designing kits and logos for me, which is just amazing. I appreciate all the effort from you guys to get involved in this series. But this other series, emulating series, you get much more involved. I'm going to bring Spencer Drury off and we're going to bring on the main man Bradley Berry up front. Orford will stay on for now. 
Danny Bynes actually playing really well. 6.9 in his... Not in, he's not in his usual position. He's playing pretty well. I'm going to bring Chris Holmes on for... Char I don't know why I persist with Charlie Lofts. He just doesn't ever play well for me. We've had one shot to their 11. There's been no highlights, though. It's very weird. Not really complaining. If we can go to... Marlow, free kick. It's in the back of the net. He's just dinked it. And it's just trickled into the bottom right-hand corner. Second goal of the season for Christian Marlow. We're 1-0 up. Are we going through to the second round? We've got it on defensive. What is the keeper doing? I have no idea. But they've done. We've they've had no highlights so far. Perhaps this will be the first one. I've got Hall in goal for the FA Cup. I forgot to mention that. So no Sivzelis today. Is he going to have to pull off a save here, Alex? Or oh, it's just wide and over. We get get lucky there. Patrick Dibber is going to come off. I can't bring him off. I've got no midfielders. Why didn't I put a midfielder on the bench? Mainly because I think. I've got players that can play there. Reese Walker can go into the middle and we will bring JJ on. And JJ will swap with Chris Holmes. Bit of juggling around at the back, which might not be a good idea. I might regret that now. But with a few minutes to go, contain is required, I think. Here's Reese Walker playing in the middle now. Warren back into Reese Walker, who apparently is our best central midfielder. He's just given the ball away there, but it's back to Warren. Reese Walker back to Danny By. Into Marlow, into Bradley Berry. Lovely ball out wide to Tim Green. What's he going to do here? He's cut inside. It's into Danny By. It's back to Tim Green. We're keeping the ball well here. It's into Walker. Nice ball into Berry. It's Marlow, oh, who somehow keeps hold of the ball. Bradley Berry wins it for us. 2 0. What a legend. Eighth goal of the season. He is back. He is properly back this season. It was brilliant play from us. Marlowe somehow kept hold of the ball there. Played it into Orford. And it's a lovely little dinked pass through to Barry. Oh, it's a perfect finish from him. Into the left-hand side of the goal. And we are going through to the second round of the FA Cup. The FA Cup journey continues. This is brilliant. The furthest we've gone in the competition so far. If we can get through to the third round, that's where the real money is. Marlowe out wide to green. Can we end it on a high with another goal? Probably not. Knocked away. We have won against Fleetwood Town of League One. We only had four shots in the entire game. That was very special from us. And we finally won a game this season in a live comp. Absolutely brilliant from us. Maybe I should use that tactic a bit more often because it was very effective. We had 63% of the possession. We may have only had four shots, but we kept hold of the ball brilliantly. What a performance. Well done, chaps. Record attendance broken. 3,958 of you turned up to watch us beat Fleetwood Town. Pre previous record was 2,569. Although I think we beat that in, in a friendly. So I'm guessing friendlies don't count in this attendance record. Either way, and we've broken the, the gate receipts as well. Doesn't half of it go to the opposition team for FA Cups? Games? I, I, I don't know. Either way, well done. Regen. Regen Rovers, Regen Rovers. Kind of tempted to, to keep with that tactic, but it was quite boring. I like to score goals. It's solid. If I need something solid, then I suppose I can can go to that. So this is the second round of the FA Cup. There's not many teams in the second round because it's the third round when all the, the Championship and Premier League teams come in. Who are we going to get then? Let's do this properly. Draw next team. There we are. We're at home against Crawley Town of League 2. So technically... It should be an easier game, but Crawley are t towards the top of League 2, so it might end up being a harder game because their morale is high. Either way, that's an exciting thing to look forward to, and I don't know when it is. I suppose we'll see in a minute. 4th of December. It's not on there. Ah, the Dagenham and Redbridge game will be rearranged, and then it will be on there, I'm sure. There we go. It's the 4th of December. So we're going to take on Stockport County today. Then behind the scenes, I'm going to play Gateshead, Salford, Staley Bridge, Lincoln City. And then we'll take on Crawley Town in the next video. Darren Miller keeps getting injured this season. He's not played a single game in the first team because he keeps getting injured. He's only scored one goal for the under 23s, three assists. It's not really, he's, he's sort of the Bradley barrier this season. Last year was quite good at times, on and off, especially towards the end of the season. This season, he's just not doing it for us. And the under-23s have lost only our second game of the season. Jack Young, though, scored two goals, which is pleasing to see. But you can see the under-23s are doing well. They're third in the table. 
behind Portsmouth and Oxford. Look at this guy, Alan Ashcroft, 16 years old. He's got an in incredible moustache. <laughs> Those eyebrows, they're scary. It's just like... Maybe not quite like that. It's because of the hair pack that I am using now. So there's going to be a few... They look nice, the players, but some of them will be quite funny because they'll have full-on beards at the age of 16, probably. Stockport County away from home, then. They are top of the table. This is a huge clash for us. Maybe I should play the defensive tactic. We're, we're away from home against top of the table Stockport. And Danny Bai is going to play defence midfield once again because he put in a solid performance there. He is obviously a centre-back and I probably will go back to the more attacking tactic against other teams. But top of the table Stockport away from home. I think it's sensible to play a more defensive tactic, don't you? I think that's what you guys would do. And it's a familiar tactic to us. It's not like I'm changing it up completely and we're unfamiliar. It's been there the whole time. So they're used to playing this. And they, they played this for quite a long time at one point. Sivzelis in goal then. Walker, Lawrence and JJ at the back. So Lofts has lost his place. JJ's been awful so far for us. But I'm giving him another chance there. The young 18-year-old centre-back. I've got high hopes for him. I think he can be a decent player for us. I've got Chris Holmes on the bench if need be. By in defence midfield, Warren and Green on the wing backs because they've been playing pretty well there. Marlow and Dibber in central midfield once again. And Orford keeps his place up front, front, but Bradley Berry comes in alongside him. They've both been scoring goals this season. Orford in the under-23s, Berry in the first team. Let's hope Orford can start scoring in the first team now. Here we are in Stockport then for this critical game. We're only five points behind Stockport. So it's a real opportunity here to, to catch up with them. They've actually lost more games than us this season. Maybe it's a bit defensive me me doing this and should be more adventurous. And I bet if if I concede an early goal, you know what I'm like. I'll change it straight away and I'll be like, well, it's not working. Let's go to the other tactic. I can't help it, guys. It's 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 just it's a problem I have. Dominic Vos used to play for West Ham back in the day, as you can see there. How old is he now? On this game, he's 27. Of course, we're a few years into the game. Impress me, guys. Let's give a passionate team talk. There we go. Start match. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Don't know what that was. I think Stockport have a decent sized stadium. This is a massive match towards the top of the table, actually. Perhaps I should have been more adventurous. I've already said that, haven't I? But the doubts were through your mind when you decide to try something a bit different. Marlow with the corner. Headed away, it's back to Danny Bai, who wasn't in the box because he's he's not a centre-back today. Warren into Lawrence, it's not interesting, ball out wide to Orford. Orford puts it in, JJ! <laughs> oh, JJ of all people, the 18-year-old, who's been awful in the, f the first couple games he's played for the club, finds the back of the net. Orford with another assist, it's a decent ball into the box actually, sticks it in right-footed. This is a striker's finish from JJ, that's delightful. And we're 1-0 up against all odds. 72% possession, though. This is a corner from Holden. Headed away. It's back to Fleming. Come on, guys. Get out there. Close him down. Put pressure on. Don't let them knock it into the box. Dibber didn't do very well there. And it's offside. We escape. Ah, oh, Barry's lost the ball. He's not done anything yet today. And here comes Dale for Stockport. Put in a tackle, lads. Here's Con Cannon. Out. Oh, this is going to be a goal. I said so. Dale at the far post. We were just cut open far too easily there. I'm going to go more direct. I th nah, actually, we're keeping hold of the ball well, aren't we? We'll just leave it like this. 1-1 one, one is okay at this stage. Without Danny Bai at the back, maybe we're not quite so solid. Walker's not having a great game. But Lawrence... I mean, it's not about Danny Bai, is it, really? Perhaps Danny Bai could come into the back and... Bring on Holmes for Lawrence, and we'll have our usual two, Bay and Walker, at the back, because they're used to playing next to each other, aren't they? We can't split them up for too long. Bradley Berry's not done anything yet. Let's give him a bit of a boost. We're doing okay. This is, I mean, we've got, we've come for the draw in a way by being defensive. But if we can nick a winner, that would be wonderful. Do I risk it and go to the attacking tactic for the last 
half an hour. Dilemmas, eh? As being a football manager, you just you don't, you you start to appreciate how many questions and how many doubts go through your mind. Should I do this? Should I do that? But if I do this, maybe they'll score, and then I'll be blamed for for doing that, for bringing on Maroan Fellaini for the last ten minutes and giving away a penalty. You know, you don't know, do you? You don't know these things. I'm going to bring Marlow. Oh, I don't have a central mid. Why do I never have a central midfielder? I'm going to bring. We're going to bring Berry and Orford off. We're going to change the front two. I'm going to bring on Craig Palmer and Brady Chick. They both naturally fit into those positions. Let's just change it up a bit. We are going to go direct to Brady to Brady Chick, though. Let's, let's try something different. He can knock it down for Craig Palmer to hopefully get on the end off. It's another corner to Stockport. Whipped over, headed away brilliantly by Danny By. Back into the box though, and it's in the back of the net from Dale again. We're going to have to go to the other one. The problem is, we don't have a striker. Uh, what I will do is Dibber can play there as the advanced playmaker attack. This is unfortunate, isn't it? We go 2-1 down, 10 minutes to go. Walker can play midfield instead of Holmes. He's more natural there. And we're going to go overload. I guess you get punished for being defensive, don't you? It's knocked back into the box. And this guy here, Tim Green, playing Dale on side. The Sivzelis comes out and it's just lobbed over him with a simple header. It's another corner to Stockport. Whipped over. Headed down. What a save by Sivzelis. <laughs> that was a remarkable save from him again. And I think it's all over for us today. We've managed to beat an League One team, but we've lost against top of the table Stockport and they move further ahead we're unlikely to win this league aren't we Walker clears that and we can't get hold of the ball and since going to this more attacking tactic they've just dominated close them down guys get it back do something close down get stuck in here's Danny by oh, end of the highlight long throw from Holden Really long throw, and Sivzelis catches that. Knock it up the pitch, Sivzelis. Come on. Come on. Of course, I've told him to throw it out to, to the fullbacks, and now JJ's in a tight spot as they close him down. What's he going to do? Oh, JJ. He's, he's got rid of the ball, but it's it's gone to them. And here comes Stockport. It's suddenly turned depressing, hasn't it? Oh, Sivzelis saves it. I think he saved it with his feet. And we're not getting back into this. This is this is another loss. Stockport suddenly in this last part of the game have just dominated and destroyed us. They are top. That's the excuse. But it would have been nice to get a draw. I'm going to say that. Can't be too harsh on the guy. Siv Zellis, 6.2. So it was actually regarded as his fault for that goal. The winning goal because he came out. Interesting. That's the, that's the worst. I think that's the worst rating he's ever got. Has he has Alex Hall made him nervous? Has, has he thought, well, I'm easily number one the last couple of years. I've been doing so well because he's not felt threatened by war. Alex Hall has come in to the team, 19, year, 19 years old. He's, he's a good prospect, of course, and he's pretty much up to his standards already. Is he suddenly a little bit worried? Uh, Ellis is improving. Every keeper makes a mistake, but... It didn't look... It was a little bit of a mistake coming out, maybe. But at the same time, he had to do something, didn't he, I think, in that situation. So he's a bit unlucky. The game thinks he's he's lost us that game. So he is to blame. Anyway, that was our, only our second defeat of the season in all competitions. And it does leave us ninth in the table. I'm going to play four games behind the scenes, and then we're going to take on Crawley Town in the FA Cup second round. 28 points. The playoffs are still in sight as we move towards the halfway point of the season. It's just those draws that are very irritating. But we will turn this around, guys, I promise. Thanks for watching today's episode. Please smash that like button as usual. Be much appreciated just to spread some Christmas joy. And I will see you in the next episode.